Hello everyone. In this video tutorial, we will see how we can use YOLO V8 for ships detection and tracking. So let's get started. So following the data set we will be using for this project, this is the ship's data set. Uh, we have uh, many images of ships uh, through drones, which are captured through drone. So you can see that the data set consists of around 794 images. And we have only one class in this data set and the class name is board. You can call it ship as well. And so these are all the drone capture images of ships. Like you can see over here, uh, we have three classes, train, validation, test set as well. And you can see over here, we have the training images, we have the validation images, we have the test images as well. And if we go to the health check over here, if we click over here, this is the health check, which you can see over here. So you can see that data set consists of 794 images and they, each image consists of around three annotations. So 2.6, uh, you can just uh, make it three annotations per image. So there are, uh, there are around 2,025 annotations on, 794 images and here we have the median image ratio which is 510 cross 493 over here and this is the purple box which highlights that where we have the mess most amount of images over uh, in the data set over here and this is the overview of data set over here so we will just download this data set and or you can say that we will simply export this data set from RoboFlow into the Google Code App Notebook. So to export this data set from RoboFlow into your Google Code App Notebook, please make sure that you have must have created an account on RoboFlow. So I have already created an account on RoboFlow. If you haven't created the account on RoboFlow, you can just go to the RoboFlow and just sign up over there and create an account. Please make sure that your account is created on public plan. Uh, so if it is on some other plan, then you will not be able to export this data set from RoboFlow into your Google Colab notebook. So please make sure that your uh, account is on a public plan. Then click on, after creating an account and going to this data set, just click on download this data set and just from here. Uh, so as we are just implementing YOLO V8, uh, so YOLO V8 and YOLO V5, both were released by Ultralytics. So you can, uh, to implement, uh, to export this data set into the Google Colab Notebook, you can either use YOLO v5 PyTorch format or YOLO v8 format. So if you export this data set into your Google Colab Notebook in YOLO v5 PyTorch uh, format, then you can also implement this, uh, like you can also implement YOLO v8 uh, or you can simply train YOLO v8 on this data set as well. So just click on continue over here. So uh, here we have the code. So we will just copy this code and uh, we will paste this code in, in Google Code App. Okay. So just you can copy this. And if you paste this code in the Google Code App, the data set will be downloaded from RoboFlow into your Google Code App notebook. So plus one thing I want to tell you for this project, I will be using expense ID. Expense ID is similar as Google Code App, but one thing uh, that expense ID provides, which is not available in Google Code App is that you can deploy your model and monitor your model as well. Plus you can create an API as well over there. So we will just look at expense in a quick overview. So if you just go over here and just write expense.com over here. So if you just create your account for the first time, you will be given 25 free credits over here. So as I have the elite membership, so I have 95.02 credits, but if you create your account for the first time, you will be given 25 free credits, which you can use these credits to train your model and on GPU, basically in expense, we have Tesla T4 GPU and other uh, Tesla T4 and V100 uh, uh, GPU as well. So uh, you can either train your model through Tesla T4 or V100 GPU as well. So as you have 25 free credits, so you can enjoy it. So, so to uh, go over here, you can simply create an account on expense. So I have already created an account and you can see that I have the lead membership. So if you are using the expense for the first time, you can just create a, 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 an account over here and you will be given 25 free credits. So then you can go to the projects and so, I had created, already created a ship uh, detection project. So I have opened already project over here. So if you go over here, there we have the Jupyter notebook over here. So this is similar to the, like we have Google Colab notebook. So here we have the expense server option. So you can see that we have two GPUs option available as well. We have the default CPU 
uh, which we have in the Google Code Lab as well. Plus we have a Tesla T4 and Tesla V100 GPU option available as well. So in this project, we will use Tesla T4. So Tesla T4 is also very good, while Tesla V100 is very fast. Uh, but um, Tesla V100 consumes a bit more credits and Tesla T4 consume a bit less credits. So I will just save my credits and focus on Tesla T4. So this is the same thing like we use in Google Code App Notebook. Nothing is different from that. So here we have the notebook uh, script file over here. So for this project, I will be using this uh, basically as we are uh, doing object detection and tracking as well. So for this project, I will be using this GitHub repo over here. So you can simply assess this notebook file from here as well. So if you go over here, okay, so I will just add this GitHub repo link in the description of the video as well. So if we go over here, so you can see that uh, object detection and tracking using YOLO V8 on custom data set. So as we are training the YOLO V8 model on the FIS, uh, ship's data set, so basically ship's data set is also the custom data set. Uh, so uh, we will be using this Google Code Lab file link. So you can simply uh, just copy this link and just open this link in any new tab over here. So we will be basically using this Google Code Lab file over here to implement this, uh, to implement YOLO V8 with deep sort object tracking on the custom data set, which is of ships in this project case over here. So you can, you can see that we will be using this Google Colab file. So I have just opened this Google Colab file into the expense notebook over here. Okay, so I've just opened this Google Colab notebook file. So let me just explain you the quickly the code. So in the first step, we will be importing the image library. So we, we basically use the image library when we want to display any input or output image into our notebook over here, like the expense notebook or in the Google Colab notebook. Then in the next step, basically I am just cloning the GitHub repo. So I am just cloning the GitHub, this GitHub repo over here. So if you just click go here and copy this, so I, I basically I'm just cloning this GitHub repo, like this GitHub repo. I'm just cloning this GitHub repo into my uh, notebook over here. Okay. So you can just clone, uh, copy the link and just paste this link over here. Okay. So now in the next step, uh, I have already run this cell. So I've not, not execute these steps again over here. Okay, so, so in the, basically here, I've just cloned the GitHub repo. Also in the next step, we will see the what is our present working directory and we will set this folder as our present working directory, which you can see over here. So if you see over here, if I go to load more and we can see that I will just set this folder as my present working directory by clicking, right clicking over here. So as basically we have just cloned this folder, like this folder we have just cloned over here. Like this is the Yodo V7 object tracking folder, which we have, uh, this is the GitHub repo, basically which we have downloaded into our expense notebook through by cloning the GitHub repo. So we will just copy path over here and just paste this path from here to just here and just clone control V and add this path over here. Next, in the next step, it is necessary to install all the required libraries or the dependencies that are necessary to run this script. So basically I'm just inst uh, installing all the required libraries or the dependencies that are required to run the script. So using pip install minus e dot dev, it will install all the required libraries or the dependencies that are necessary to run this script. So some libraries are pre-installed while some libraries need time to be installed. So I'm just installing all those required libraries over here. But if you skip this step, uh, when you run the training or the validation or the testing script, then you will face this error that following library is not installed like Hydra, Matplotlib, or Seabond. So it is in this, uh, this is an important step and Please make sure that you run this step, uh, run this cell before running the training, testing, or the validation script. Okay. So this will install all the required libraries that are required to run the training, testing, or the validation script. So now in, in the next step, as we are doing detection and tracking, so we will go into this clone folder. And so if we just click over here, and then we will go to Ultralytics from here. And then we will go to uh, YOLO from here. And then we will go to V8. And then we will go to detect. And in the next step, uh, basically, as we are performing detection over here, so we'll just uh, set this folder as our current directory. So just copy path from here and just paste this path from here to here. So you will be setting this folder as your current directory. So 
uh, in the next step, uh, we will download this data set, off ship data set, by copying this from here and just pasting things from over here. So we will download the data set from RoboFlow into our expense notebook from here. So I have already downloaded this data set. So I will not repeat this step. So at plus we are performing the object tracking using deep sort. So we will download the deep sort files from the Google drive into our expense notebook. So I'm just downloading the deep sort files from the drive into my expense notebook. Then I'm just unzipping the deep sort files over here. So you can see that uh, this is the zip file and this is the file which I've unzipped and this is the data set which I have downloaded. So, so here I've uh, already downloaded a data set. This is a train test and validation folders, which you can see over here, data.yml files contains the training validation and test data set paths over here. And here you can see that to implement the object tracking. So basically what does object tracking is do is that it basically assigns a unique ID to each of the detected objects. So using object tracking, we assign a unique ID to each of the detected object, okay? So here I'm just downloading a deep sort files. Basically we are implementing object tracking using deep sort. So I'm just downloading the deep sort files from the Google drive into the expense notebook. So this is the zip file from, you can see over here. So basically we download the zip file and we just unzip this uh, deep sort files we can see over here. So this is the unzip file. So if you see over here, uh, we have the deep sort file, we have the readme file, we have the configuration file over here. So now in the next step, what we will do is that we will train our YOLO, uh, YOLO V8 model on this ship's data set. So I'm just training the YOLO V8 model on the ship's data set. Here I've just set the data set location. Data.yml file contains the data set parts of the training validation and test folder. And this is the number of epochs on which I am training the YOLO V8 model on the ship's data set. I am set and I am setting the default image size, which is 640. And I'm just running a training.py script. So I have trained already trained the model on 70 epochs. And we can see that we have uh, got a good mean average precision. So let me just uh, go in the end of the results from here. So now you can see that the mean average precision, which we obtained with IU 50 0.9. 68, which is 96.8%, and the mean average precision with IU 50 to 95 is 71.3 or 0 0.713, which is 71.3%. So this is our very good results, and our uh, weights are saved in the uh, train folder, which is over here. If I go to over here, so in the runs detect train folder, our weights files are saved, which is over here. So if we go over here and in the runs detect, and if we go to a train file over here, so, okay, so I think if we go over here, so in the weights folder, so in this folder, basically our weights files are saved over here. So uh, here I've just displayed the confusion metrics over here. So um, I think that's not looking very cool. So let me try to just uh, save this image or let me just try to open this image in new tab, open image. Okay. Okay. Just let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, ah, uh, let me just open this image or save this image. So here we have the confusion matrix. I just downloaded this image from there and just open it in front of you. So you can see that uh, confusion matrix basically tells us how our model handles different classes, but we have only one class over here, which is of board. So you can see over here, 96 percent of the times our model detected correctly that there is a board. While 4% of the time when there was a board, our model was unable to detect it. So our model basically failed to retract the board while 96% of the times our model detected correctly that there is a board, while 4% of the times our model failed to detect that there is a board. Okay, so you can see that 96% of the times our model detected correctly that there is a board, while 4% of the times uh, time our model failed to detect uh, that there is a board or not. So basically when there was a board, 4% uh, of 4% of the times our model was unable to detect it, while 96% of the time our model detected correctly that there is a board. Okay, so if we go ahead further and just go back to our code. So here we have the training and the validation loss. So you can see that the training is con uh, training loss uh, is continuously decreasing. So if we train our model on the higher epoch, so it means that our training epoch training loss will further decrease and plus. Uh, here we also 
have the validation loss. Uh, we, I, I think I should download this image again as well and show you uh, the mean average precision as well. I just downloaded the loss graph and the mean average precision graph. So you can see that uh, the training loss is continuously decreasing. So if we train our model on higher epochs, like currently we have trained the model on 70 epochs. So if we train our model on 100 or 150 epochs, this loss will further decrease. Plus we can see that the mean average precision is continuously increasing. So if we train our model on higher epochs, like 150 or 200 epochs, we can say that the mean average precision will further improve. Like you can see here, mean average precision is increasing. Mean average precision with the IRU 50 is increasing. Mean average precision with the IRU 50 to 95 is also increasing. So this definitely means if we train our model on higher epochs, this, uh, this will further improve as well. So let's go back to the code again. So now uh, we have seen the losses. So uh, you can directly download the weights file from the drive. Uh, so if you are running this script, so you can uh, directly download the weight files from the drive into your notebook. So you don't need to train the model again. Okay. So here uh, now basically we will validate our model. Um, so we have just passed the best weights of the model over here. You can see over here and here we have the data set location over here. So we will be validating our model uh, using the validation.py script and we will be validating the model on the validation data set images. So these images are not used for the training. So it's always better to have a look and uh, see how our model performs. Like we can see that the mean average precision with IRU50 on the validation data set images, with, we got 96.4%, which is 0.964. So it is 96.4%. And mean average precision with IRU50 to 95 uh, is 71.6%, which is 0.716. Okay. So let's test our model on some demo images. So I have already tested the model on the demos image, uh, demo videos, sorry, not images. I have already tested the model on some demo videos. So I have just, I will just run the predict.py script and here I've just passed the best model weights over here. And here we have the demo video on which I am testing my trained or fine tuned YOLO V8 model on the ship's data set, okay? So we are just passing the best, best weights of the model. So our model is fine tuned or trained on the ships data set. So we have trained the Yolo V8 model on the ships data set. So I have already run the this on a sample demo video, video over here. So uh, instead of showing these results on the expense notebook, let me just navigate my screen and show you some output demo videos, which I got. Uh, when I run this uh, predict.py script by passing the best model weights on, uh, on some demo videos. So just let me navigate my screen and show you some of the results from here. Okay, so now you can see an output video. So if I play this over here, so you can see that the model was very, uh, detecting the boards very well. And you can see that uh, if you just focus on here, you can see that uh, each detected object, like each board is assigned a unique ID, like five, nine, 16, 21, 24, 23, 14. So each of the detected object is being assigned a very unique ID. Uh, okay, so the unique uh, ID is being assigned randomly. So uh, this is what we do in tracking. Basically we assign an ID to each other detected object. So what is basically tracking? In tracking, we assign an ID to an ID to each other detected object. So like you can see here, we have assigned five, four, 12, nine, 21 and we have the bounding boxes when we have directed the board. So let's test on some other demo videos and let me just play them, just give me a minute. Okay, just, um, I have already uh, tested on multiple videos and just downloaded those videos and just let me play those videos over here. Okay, so, so now you can see over here, uh, this is another video on which I've tested. So you can see that the model is able to detect the boards here as well. So the overall working of the model is fine. Like you can see that model is able to detect boards, very fine. So let's test on some other demo videos as well and see how our models perform on some other demo videos. So uh, I've tested on some other demo videos as well. So let me just play those videos. Okay, so this is other video. You can see that uh, this is other wrong or false prediction done by the model while you can see that the model was able is able to detect the boards over here as well. So in this way, you can test the model on multiple uh, in videos or images as well. And if there is any issue, do let me know. So this is all from this video tutorial. See you all in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.